Dear Agent of the Universe, It is hard to know where to start, as there is so much to tell, and I know we have time, so much time. And I hope these letters will reveal to you who I am in all my manifestations, as well as the conditioning and reasoning behind my actions and what may seem to others as my insanity. But before I begin my story that has been defined and influenced by yoga, I should tell you that meeting you knocked me off my yoga mat. In yoga, and by the laws of the universe, which I shall get to at some point, there is no such thing as chance. Our reality is a direct reflection of our internal state, the energetic vibration we give off, and our karma that our consciousness has carried on from our past career incarnations. I am not sure what meeting you is telling me about myself, but I am sure I will find out in time. Because only in knowing each other will we learn more about ourselves. Because we are reflections of each other. Because everyone and everything that surrounds us and defines us in the material world reflects who we are. The energy we are giving off and how much we really do or do not love ourselves. But go a little deeper and the relationships we have in this lifetime come into our lives to teach us something and give us an opportunity to break from the negative past and present karmas. Meeting you the way we did is something I'm struggling to wrap my small-sized head around right now. Because let's be honest, what are the chances of me meeting a government agent from the United States on a 16 by 32 desert island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean at the height of COVID? The day we met was the first time in nearly three years that my friends and I had decided to go to that hotel for breakfast. That we sat beside you was no coincidence, or that your presence made itself aware in my consciousness so that I felt compelled to interrupt your team breakfast and ask you who you were and what you were doing on an island. An island where literally no one could come in or out, and yet, there you were. I must confess, I did find it rather surprising that you took my number at the end of the interruption, as there was a large energetic wall around all of you that screamed, do not enter. That is one of the things about following and practicing yoga in its entirety. You learn to read people's energy, rather than their behaviors or actions, as the latter are often just subconscious habits we engage in without really being aware of our behavior or speech. So although your words said one thing, your energy told me otherwise. I knew you were not tourists. I knew you were not drug lords, money launderers seemed out of the question. And the fact that you were American and arrived on a private jet or literally were dropped out of the sky put you in the general category of government or aliens. It is amazing what you can learn about people if you listen with awareness rather than with your senses. Allow me to define awareness here. It is the process by which you are not only aware of the impact of your words and actions on yourself and on others, but also the platform through which we learn the true basis of our behavior. Not on a shallow superficial level, but at a level so deep that you need to wade through your entire history to understand the driving force behind your actions and words. And all this can only be done if you step back and become an observer of yourself from a standpoint of objectivity, objectivity, and yes, awareness. I knew from the moment you took my number that you were not going to call me, as your wall was like something out of Star Wars, a Jedi energy that told me you liked me, but you were way off limits. I left that day feeling a little dizzy, very confused, and then decided to just let it go. As I began to bump into you and have brief conversations, I started to see glimpses of the human behind the badge. Because really, we all hide behind something. Forever fearful of someone truly seeing us, our insecurities, vulnerabilities, and then judging or ridiculing us. You know what is funny about that? It is that our understanding of ourselves is so limited and constantly shifting that we don't even truly know ourselves or want to know ourselves, and that is why we hide. You held on to my number for five weeks and only used it after leaving the country, only to tell me that you would like to get to know me. 
Why on earth did you do that? <laughs> I have asked the universe that every day since you left and still have received no clear answer. But as I have learned, sometimes we do not get the answer until the journey is ended and we begin on another one. I have spent months being aware of my repeated history and the lessons I am only now understanding I need to learn if I no longer want parts of my future to look like my past. I know. I am tired of bouncing off the bottom in the men that I choose, and if I don't learn soon and shift my energy, the bottom will open up one day and swallow me. On the surface, you give me hope that I have finally learnt my lessons and that I am closer to the destination of true self-love, of having happiness that wells up from within rather than being dictated by influences external to myself, and vibrating at a frequency that is so high The signals I am sending out are resonating across the universe and bringing me back what I have asked the universe for. Which is a love, where I have no expectations of myself, nor do I pass judgment or am unkind or disrespectful to myself. A love where I forgive myself for the mistakes I make, and a love that takes care of me, mentally, emotionally, and physically. A waterfall of love that cascades not only over myself, but on those around me, strangers included. But also a love that does not allow others to hurt or disrespect me, or most of all, to take me for granted. To set boundaries and to remove anything negative that does not serve me well in my life. A love that understands that to truly give love to others, I must first learn to give it to myself and feel it for myself. Yes, I know. It would almost seem easier to take a couple of shots of tequila to feel like this, rather than do all the work I am about to set out in these letters. I realize there is a chance you will read this and think this is nuts, and walk away even before we have begun. And if you do, then I am already ahead of the game, as it means that I am speaking my truth, and I am no longer afraid of the outcome that comes from truly showing up in any and all of my interactions, that I have with all living things. But please know, we have time. I am breaking a habit just by saying that and enacting it. My habit to dive into the deep end and embrace life as if I were on ecstasy has worked great life-wise, but not so good relationship-wise. Therefore, with you, I am going to take the time. Be patient, breathe, enjoy the journey and be present. Nothing more, nothing less. And because I feel brave and courageous, and because I have done the work, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to tell you my story from a point of truth, without fear of judgment. I'm going to lay my heart open, and I'm going to do it from a point of pure love and try not to be attached to the outcome. Because the only way we can ever, ever overcome suffering is living life from a point of love, without attaching that love or our sense of self to anything external to us or the love that we give out. This may be my greatest test, and I must be honest, I am terrified. Because although my story may write like the Wild West insane adventure story, there is ugliness there, as there is in all our stories. I have done the work and faced my truths. I have forgiven myself and let go of the burdens I have held from my mistakes. But to show it to a stranger that has come into my life in such a bizarre way is not easy. However, to not do it would be a great disservice to the connection I have felt to you and to myself. Because by now I have learnt to trust the universe. Because it has shown up exactly as I have been taught it would, over and over again. It has kicked my ass more times than I can count. It has pulled me to rock bottom, lifted me up to what felt like the moon, and then dropped me from great heights repeatedly. But each time I have got up, let the bruises heal, and went back to school to learn from gurus, doctors, teachers, life, and books. To learn what enlightened ones have known for thousands and thousands of years. I have then put all of that into practice every single day until I reached here. A place of deep understanding of my place in the universe and how to live about above the constant pendulum of emotions that swings within us. To med- mediate my emotions so that I am not bounced from one end of the pole to the other. From good to bad, 
happy to sad, fear to courage, and to shift my energy to a higher frequency so that the beauty I give out is reflected in the beauty that comes back to me every single day. How? How may I, how may you ask if I done that? Well, you just have to listen to the story. But before I go, because I must go and teach a group, a yoga class to a group of people who have saved me more times than I can remember from drowning in the avalanche of changes COVID has brought into my life. Because of them, I've had to practice and study yoga in its entirety. Because to teach it without living it would be a lie. I wanted to end with this. I understand if you want to get off this boat, or anyone who is listening to these letters before it is even left, but I will ask you to take this ride with me. Because I am a gift in every sense, and you may not realize it now, but taking this boat will change your life forever. In my next letter, I think I will explain what I mean by the universe, as it will be a constant companion in this journey of ours into the unknown. Almost like a chaperone, which I can tell you I'm in need of. A couple of years ago, I would have got on a plane without any thought of the consequences and flown to Washington. It is how I ended up on a desert island in the middle of nowhere. But alas, I am learning to break bad habits, as habits keep us in the past and in fact put our brain out of business. I really must go now. I have touched on so many things in this letter, all of which I will expand on in time because it really is fascinating the forces that drive us to behave the way we do. When I explain it to you, you too will begin to see and engage in your life in a different way. I'm not sure why, but my knowledge is a gift I want to share with you, because I feel you are open to hearing it and learning from it. Not everyone is ready to hear what I know, because the work that comes with it is truly challenging, but the outcome is a life lived to its fullest potential. I don't know who you are to me, and expect it will be a while before it is revealed to either one of us. However, I do know you are meant to be in my life right now, and this meeting will forever change our lives. The Enchanted Yogi